Hi, I'm attorney Gregory Dell with Dell and & Schaefer, and I'm joined by attorney Stephen Jessup. And we're going to talk today about what should you do when transitioning from short-term disability benefits to long-term disability benefits. And Stephen, actually, this is one of the probably top five areas where we see claims denied yeah. for a variety of reasons. And I want to go through some of those reasons that we see and, and how a person can help prepare themselves to make that transition so that they know the road that leads ahead. So let's start with, from the inception of a claim with short-term disability, how often do you usually see these periods of short-term disability before they can even get to the long-term disability benefits? You mean like actually go through it? I mean, more often than not, an employer is gonna have the short-term disability mm -hmm. aspect. And a lot of times, but not always, it'll be the same insurance company as the long-term disability. Um, but there's a, a real big misnomer that most people don't realize, and I think part of the reason why we see such a large amount of denials going from the transition from short-term to long-term is the funding of the actual policies. Usually under short-term disability, you know, say you have Hartford is, is doing it. They're not, they don't underwrite, they don't insure it. They administer the policy for your employer. They say, we find disability. Right. They tell employer, employer cuts the check. Um, but when it goes to long term in this situation, Hartford underwrites that policy, meaning it's their money. So when it's coming out of their pocket, you see that their reviews tend to be a lot more aggressive. And it's not, you know, un uh, uh, it's, it's quite often that you see that the same information they approved you for short term all of a sudden is no good for long term. And a lot of people say, well, how can this be? So sometimes people, I think, are lulled into a false sense that if my short term was approved, my long term disability was approved. So you have to be very careful in that transition because the stakes are much higher and the body of proof and evidence that your insurance company is going to want is generally much greater than they do in short term. All right, so let's talk about that evidence because that's what it's all about. What should a person do to put themselves in the best position to get approved when they transition to long-term disability? It's really medical. You know, getting with your doctors, uh, making sure you're, you're seeing your doctor frequently enough. The doctor understands what the issues are. It's being documented well in your, your file. Uh, those types of things because the, the time frame sh for short-term, generally 90 to 180 days on short-term disability. The situations where it's 90 days before it goes into long term, that's not a lot of time to really get you know, information really you know, solid and solidified. So it's really working with the doctors and making sure um, that everything's being documented. And, and sometimes though, it can be to the detriment of the client where they're treating with their primary care and they need to get in with a specialist, but it can take a while to get into a specialist. So you may not even have records from a specialist. So, if this is a condition that's been chronic in nature before you finally decided to you know, go on disability, um, ideally you would have had a good course of treatment with a specialist prior to that, um, but it's really document, document those medical records. And if the person's on short-term disability, when do they need to notify the long-term disability company? Generally, they don't, um, especially if it's the same carrier. Uh, they will send forms out. Uh, just recently with Hartford on a short-term appeal, I'm waiting for a decision on the appeal and their long-term department sent claim forms for the application there. Uh, the situations where you do have to give notice, a lot of times some companies will use a third-party administrator like Cedric or the Reed Group, uh, which does their own evaluation separate and apart from the insurance company. So. I, in those situations, say we should put the insurance company on notice sooner because if you wait till the end of your 90 days, the insurance company, you know, it hasn't seen any of this information. Right. They have to gather it, then they're going to do the review so it can be a lot longer. So um, in situations like that, notify early, uh, but in most other where the insurance company handles the short and the long term, they have their own internal process in transitioning things over. So most of the companies, um, the short term and long term is handled by the same mm -hmm. disability insurance company and that's when you find that it's not a self-funded plan initially Correct. meaning that your employer isn't doing it as like a salary continuation. Correct. So that's probably the, the vast majority of mm -hmm. the short to long term transition. So if a person's been approved for short term, should they assume that their long term is automatically going to get approved? Sorry. No, no, they, they really shouldn't. Um, there's a, there's a good chance that it will, but you shouldn't have that assumption. But going back to like what I said, when an insurance company, when the, the, your monthly benefit is coming out of their pocket, right. they are going to look to fight it much more than when it's coming out of someone else's. Um, so you shouldn't assume that just because you're on short term, the long term would be approved. I would say that uh, the transition from short to long term and then 
the change in definition from own to any occupation are leaps and bounds the two times that you are most likely to see a claim denial or that we get contact and there's been a claim denial. Should the person on short term who's transitioning to long term with the same company expect that they're going to work with the same claims person? No, it'll go to a different claims person. It'll be in a different department. Uh, all new set of people will take it over. Should they expect a completely new medical review, occupational review of the file and everything when transitioning from short to long term? Occupationally speaking, usually no. They usually do that short term and that'll, that'll stay the same. There may or may not be updated medical. They may take a look at new medical, but it may still be the same person who is looking at the short term. And in terms of the definitions of disability, is it always going to be the same definition from the short-term disability policy to the long-term disability policy? Not always, but the vast majority of the time, yes. It's the same idea of the inability to do your own occupation, at least for a period of time. Um, there are cases though, where some policies from the get-go are, can you do any job? Uh, but generally speaking, if short term is the inability to do your own job, uh, when it goes into long term, at least for the first 24 months, usually could be less, could be more. It's that kind of same standard. Talk a little bit about the mentality of how these internal claims people, um, especially long term disability claims examiners, are trained with this return to work methodology and, and return to work guidelines. What are those and how are those applied against disability claimants? Yeah, so usually early on they're already finding out when you may be going back to work. You know, that's what they want to know. The goal for them is evaluating the case, not in, hey, how, how can we help this person to pay them until the policy is done? Uh, it's how can we get this person back to work? What is the likelihood of them getting back to work? Say you had a, a back surgery, what's a reasonable rate of recovery? before you should be able to return to work. So they are always working with that in mind, getting you off the policy. That's the goal. It's not to keep you on the policy. It's to get you off the policy. And in, in terms of applications and paperwork, um, do the long-term disability carriers have different paperwork that may have been required for short-term disability claims? Yes, usually more, usually more. So you'll, you know, your typical claimant statement and an attending physician statement, but you will also usually have uh, education questionnaires, education training stuff, any work history, um, you know, things about your activities of daily living, things like that. There will be much more. The claim packet for a long-term disability is always much bigger than the short-term. Sometimes on short-term, you know, you'll review the process that they have, the company has in place. You call and you start the claim by phone call and then they, they'll send out like a, you know, an attending physician statement or something like that. So the long-term will create a much uh, larger paper trail and with that there's more opportunities for them to trip you up and find rationale and reasons to try to look to deny the case. Can there be a gap or a delay in payments from the transition from short-term to long-term disability benefits for the claimant? Yes, yes. It's, uh, you know, going back to that situation where you may have like Sedgwick on short-term and then you know Hartford on long-term, uh, where it's two different entities, there's usually some delay. Uh, but even within the same company, you know, there could be a delay in getting it because they're going to want to get the update. So it doesn't always seamlessly happen. Yeah, and, and I want people to understand that, that when, they, when they go to long term, they're going to get somebody new. Mm -hmm. They're going to get someone new medically, a new claims examiner, a new director, a new nurse. All different people are going to be looking at this claim, and now they're looking at it as, how often are we going to review it? When's this person going back to work, like you said? So you may like your short-term disability person. You may have thought that was an easy process, but the long-term is going to be a completely different animal, and you need to be prepared for that. And also, how important is it for the claimant to continue with their medical treatment in order to get long-term disability benefits? You have to. I mean, no matter what anyone can do for your case, what we as lawyers can do, the medical information is always the foundation. Your chance of success in getting benefits is all based on the medical. Uh, plus, the policy will have a requirement you be under the appropriate care of a physician. So you have to continue to treat. Um, but you, you really need to, and I think especially early on in the process, you want a lot of treatment. You want to create as, as, as large of a paper trail for yourself uh, to really set your case up for future, future success. You know, a lot of people would love to go back to work. Um, some do, a lot don't. So when you're going and you're filing, you're going to long term, you may be, you have to think if, well, if I can't go back to work, how do I set the stage now to protect me and give me the best shot going forward five, 10 years from now? Right, and the other big thing we see is that people are worried about being terminated. Mm -hmm. And if they're terminated while on short-term disability, potentially 
will they still have the opportunity to get long-term disability benefits? So can someone still file for long-term disability benefits if they get terminated while on short-term? 100%. I think the only thing I've seen that I can remember, we recently saw some case law with AT&T, but their plan is, is done in a weird way. But yes, your rights under your policy, I always tell you, it's like a timestamp. Right. Uh, your date of disability, you were, in, you were uh, working there fully in, you know, insured, uh, so you do have your rights to the long term. And more often than not, when someone's on disability, once FMLA time is up right. and they have no duty to keep you, they will sever. So even if you are terminated, uh, you still have rights to pursue not only the remainder of the short term, but the long term disability. We get that question all the yeah. time, will yeah. I lose my long term disability benefits because they're mm -hmm. terminating me? And that's actually the norm that you get terminated. Yeah, because a lot of times too, in the severance paperwork or whatever the notice, they're letting you know that all these policies terminate. They may not necessarily know. It's just a form letter that you're on disability, right. um, so people do freak out. So no, it's, it's something where you, you are going to be secure with that. Great. So what I wanted people to know was that if you are in a position where you're transitioning from short to long-term disability benefits, this is a, we help people all the time with that transition process. We help them manage claims. We help with the whole application process. It's never too early or most of the time not too late for us to get involved and try to help move you along in the process. Certainly if your benefits end up getting denied, we're there to help you. No matter where you are in the country, we always offer a free initial consultation. Is all we ask is that you email us a copy of your long-term disability policy. We will immediately review it and let you know how we can help you. Our clients are located all over the country, so no matter where you live, we can help you. We encourage you to really educate yourself about this process, especially if you're only in short term now going to long term disability. There's a lot that you can learn and through searching our website, watching our videos, reading tons of articles, reviews about your company, you're going to basically put yourself in a much better position to learn how a disability insurance company thinks and therefore have the opportunity to get your benefits approved. So we'll be here in the future should you need us and we look forward to the opportunity to help you.